according to research, Africans' brains are at a, a certain degree smaller than others. No, 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 no. I'm telling you. What? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Why? When a child is born, they have free-floating neurons. What these neurons do is they build the brain. Okay. Now, based on a child's relationships, experiences, and environment, and environment connections are made inside those brains to build the brain. So these connections are based on everyday activity that touches their five senses. So when a child looks at you while they breastfeed and warm milk, I'm saying warm intentionally, mm. warm milk enters their mouth and fills them and a connection has happened between what they've seen, what they've felt, what they've smelt, your body. Now, their brains have about a hundred billion neurons in those small minds that's as many as the stars mm -hmm. 100 billion neurons in their small brains mm -hmm. now those neurons need to connect okay mm -hmm. yeah for proper brain architecture they need to connect okay. the part of their visual that connects to their language that connects to what they uh, what they hear what they see what all of those need to connect this part of the brain needs to connect with this back this one needs to connect with here this and it's only through those three things, relationships, experiences, and mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. Now, when they make a... Uh, that child, with all their 100 billion neurons in their brain, have the ability to make 1 million connections per second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when I talked of the breastfeeding, I just talked of three connections. Mm -hmm. yeah. Three? Yeah, sight, smell. Sight, smell. Just seeing you. Mm -hmm feeling the warm milk inside mm -hmm. their brain and s probably smelling you or tasting your milk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. those, okay, let's say those are five connections. But at your breast, that child has the ability to make a million connections. So if those connections are not made, the brain does something to make them it's more efficient. They, it prunes. It breaks down those connections that are not being used. Oh. Yeah. And so it just readjusts. Mm -hmm. So it's like an idle engine. Just it's like, you know, <laughs> so this was not being used. What's being used? Fear during discipline. What's being used while we are eating? Hey, eat, mm -hmm. finish your food, hurry up. As opposed to, do you know that the food you're eating is what ends up in the toilet? So what are you eating? It's potatoes. Let's go outside. Look at that potatoes. Have you realized the difference the in the connections that mm -hmm. I have made? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you find that then you don't have to teach your child agriculture in school. Because that connection was already made when they were babies. So you and don't that have children who believe the chicken comes from the supermarket. From the supermarket, yes. Mm. So the connection stays inside their brain. And you just continue to strengthen it. You say, now you see the tea you're drinking, the flavoring in it, oh, we got it from that plant. So do you know how we plant? We have a seed. Where did the seed come from? From the plant itself. This is how we do it. Then you water, then oxygen, then the rain falls, then it's rainfall, then it's combustion. All those processes. Now, do you see the reason as to why the two-year-old knew about all the countries? Yes, yes. But in, it's weird. It's, I feel like that's almost like a traditional approach. Yes, to it, education it should, it before we had be the formal exactly. structures. That's how it used that's to be done. That's how it used to be done. Mm. Yes, mm. children had the, even we who could run around could do stuff mm -hmm. like yeah. yeah our constantly, we just, I remember digging up the the mud to find the earthworm. Uh -huh, exactly. Uh -huh. The only difference though for us was relationships had been removed uh -huh. and environment had been removed. What we had was experiences. Mm -hmm. Now a child needs to have all three. That while you're removing the earthworms, your mom is seated right next to you removing the earthworms mm -hmm. and continuing a conversation on these earthworms Making that you would never forget. So when you go to school, no one is teaching, this is a cup, we want a cup, repeat it. We are under the table, everybody under the table. Under. Now I am over that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you no longer have to tell your child that because they already know that the tissue fell under their mm -hmm. table. 
mm. almost like we are under a sky. So just <laughs> making those connections, knowing fully well that your child has the capacity to make a million connections per second, mm -hmm. not per minute, yeah, per second. not per year, not per hour. Per second, they have the, the ability to make a connection between you, between the neighbor, the camera, the, the guys eating, the trees, the sky. The, they have that ability, mm -hmm. which so, is why they ask so many questions. Yes, but meanwhile, us when we are breastfeeding, we cover them mm. and, and they keep pushing TV. it because they want to look mm -hmm. at you, to look and see. And yes, study and, uh -huh. mm. this will switch on even our program. We actually even bought DVDs to watch while we. <laughs> <laughs> get ourselves comfortable Breast cover the watch as the only connections that remain for your child is now just the test and how it feels mm -hmm. so the connection maybe with the background the, sound maybe background the... sound maybe now that they've looked away what they've seen but they don't even get it because you've not helped them get it oh where are you looking at papa see that's papa ah he's coming closer he's looking at you oh he just placed a kiss on your forehead. Mm. And those are things that the, uh, the fathers do. Yes, but do we tell our children and that's what's happening? Do we talk no. to our so kids. No yes. connection whatsoever. We don't help our children make connections. That's, that's, that's the use of the relationships yes. in that whole. No, that is very powerful because people don't talk to babies. They're like, they, they don't can't talk understand with babies. Yes, we until they're older. Exactly. And then they wonder why, like me, my two year old couldn't express herself. It's exactly that. It was very evident that for this child, mm -hmm. when they told them that the Mandela Washington Fellows were coming, that was a window of opportunity to tell her about the world, which she had probably been studying, get a globe, show her where all of us were coming from, tell her about what was happening in all of these countries. The point at which she reached us, Mm -hmm. She knew what was going on. She, nobody needed to take her to a geography class yeah. to pass an exam to know about Nigeria or Uganda. She just knew it in an environment of love. She could see us. She could experience us. We had come with flags. She knew that girl will never forget these 25 countries in Africa. Never. But as our children don't even know they are in Uganda. It's very powerful. Yes. And I think for a moment, there was a time I thought this is only something for Americans and people in the first world countries. Until I met a Ugandan who had been taken in as an orphan. Okay. And Caleb. Mm -hmm. Caleb Jones Moreno. He had been taken in as an orphan. When he'd gone, he could not talk. Like he was from deep in Tororo, in an orphanage in Tororo. Mm. He could not talk. They adopted him. I saw him one year later. And he was ahead of my son. I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe. I said, how is this possible? They said, yes, it's possible. Just talk, to, talk with them and ask them questions. Ask them questions. Talk with them and get them thinking. And I remember I was like, but what do you mean? I ask her, huh? how? <laughs> like this one oh, that I say you are playing. Like, how do you do this? <laughs> and I remember I went to pick him up from school. I'd been talking with a dad. Mm. Immediately his son entered the car. It's like I didn't exist. He went into, hey, buddy, what are you thinking about? Nobody asks a five-year-old child, what are you thinking about? Yeah. They don't. They don't. But he asked his son, what are you thinking about? He said, cars. Now, if I'd ever asked Blake, like if some witchcraft had entered me and I'd ever asked Blake, he would have probably said cars, and that's where I would have ended. Mm -hmm. No, but not this father. No, what about the cars? He continued, what about the cars? He said, I'm thinking about the gas that comes out the back of the car. Crystal, by the time we got home, we talked about combustion, we talked about the ozone layer, the temperature of the sun. Did you know it's 3,000 degrees centigrade? You didn't know. But me, I'm telling you, I found out on that. <laughs> <laughs> temperature of the sun, electrical cars, climate change. Climate change, as we don't even understand, we just hear Trump. Mm -hmm. quarreling People from still don't get yeah, it. Yeah, climate change has... Our climate, our weather, climate, what's the difference between climate actually? That's what we know. The mm. difference between climate and weather to help our children pass <laughs> their exam. <laughs> this one, it was a conversation that started from, what are you thinking about? Cars. The boy left knowing carbon monoxide. 
and the, he wasn't saying, well, what did I say that gas was? No, he was just like a conversation. A conversation. Yeah, no, no, no. Which no, led no, to something else, led to something, something else, else, led to something else. You mm -hmm. think that that's where it ended? Immediately the boy got a glass of juice to drink. The dad asked, what are you drinking? Mm -hmm. He said, juice. Said, what kind of juice? Mm. We went into orange juice, vitamins, germs, disease. <laughs> it was eye-opening. I was like, oh, yo. This is what it means to stimulate a child's brain. Like you get them thinking, you get them mm. to a point that they come and ask. And now they, now you see, the children that we have now, the questions they ask us that make us get tired. Mm -hmm. Mommy, where are you going? Where are you going? When are you coming back? Those are the questions that stress us. Yeah. But those are not the questions I'm actually talking about. Mm. The questions I'm actually talking about are, Mommy, yesterday you left at nine. Mm -hmm. Now you've left at eleven. What some isn't there something wrong with this? <laughs> yeah. Or mommy, you said thinking. you work. You have an mommy. Do you, the one time my son asked me, mommy, do you have two offices? I said, no. Like why would I have two offices? I have one office. Like no. So why do you come with your computer at home? Because ah, that means and this you is sit that, and do work yeah, so at that home. means this one also is an office. Wow. Oh, my four-year-old asked me the other day, she said, Mommy, do you think everything praises God? I said, yeah, of course. She was like, no. Not the ones that don't know him. Of course. Wow. Of course the ones that don't know him. Of course. Of course. Of course. Now that's, <laughs> now that's, 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 that's the questions. Yes, mm. those are the questions that you, you get your child, like, where they think beyond, mommy, where are you going and when are you coming back? Mm -hmm. Mommy, will you bring really me a down wait? to talk to your children? Even if you don't know about the ozone layer and everything, just talk Google, about what Google, you know. Google. Even you can Google. <laughs> Google. You can Google and <laughs> no, find out what. We all Google. Yeah. Mommy, what is what? <laughs> Mommy's coming back. <laughs> Google it. Yeah. And then just, go. you can't just answer a child's question and say, yeah, it's the sun, and you leave it there. No, like you continue the conversation. Mm. So essentially, that's a, that's what the book is about. Okay. Um, equipping parents on how to have a conversation with their child from the day they come out of their tummy mm -hmm. to the day they are past the three-year-old mark. And they're more or less going into, and kindergarten. into kindergarten. So how did you meet Brian? Brian. Brian, I met Brian... We right. must, Let me we sip, must. sip, sip, <laughs> tea. <laughs> I met Brian at, um, we had, we're going to Kenya for a trip. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not telling this story right. We were, mm. he, he, I, let me not talk about him, let me talk about myself. Mm -hmm. I had, a friend of mine had told me about, a certain trip to Kenya for only 50k. Okay. 50k accommodation, two, two weeks accommodation, <laughs> food, transport covered. Now, remember, I told you that I had never traveled, eh? mm -hmm. so it was like my first and opportunity was, and was 50k. Yes, it was through a church, through ministry, acting ministry. So, this was my only opportunity to leave the country, please. <laughs> I, I don't even remember if I had a passport, I have to remember. Now, they told me about the trip, I got my 50k. At that point, I remember university, apart from selling juice, I was also, <laughs> no, what haven't I done? <laughs> selling phone covers, uh -huh. selling airtime, selling, not phones, but just phone accessories yes. in, my, in my hostel. Oh, in, so you had a space in your hostel or in oh, your room? On which day? In my handbag. Oh, hey. Yeah, okay. as I would go down to peel mangoes or whatever, after I finished peeling and all of that stuff, I finished serving, then I would go downtown. Where people were in class, I would go downtown, get phone accessories, put in my bag, come back, say, guys, have you seen this phone? 3310 was easy to case. Well, I was in looking for for airtime mm. um so no boy would buy me airtime yeah so um i'm excited for this trip i have like a 50k i've made some money yeah i go on that trip mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm seated in the bus i see a cute boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah the bus is really high so you can see him from there 
and he's you know those like turn boys mm -hmm. under the bus pulling pulling stuff from under the bus so he was pulling um, I think he was trying to arrange the cases that were there mm -hmm. and to put chuckle. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Mlondo came with his chuckle with his friends, <laughs> got the chuckle <laughs> and put it under there. So he obviously came dirty. Mm -hmm. He had folded up his pants like all the way to the top. <laughs> his shirt, the, the, you know how you have all the buttons, but then you tie the bottom one and then take it up. So the boat, the tie is here and the collar is behind. Like ah. he looked so, and then he didn't speak any English word, but he was so cute. <laughs> but he didn't speak any English word. I remember seeing him come up the bus, and God telling me I was going to get married to him. I said you are joking. I said wow. you are joking. Wait 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 wait. wait. <laughs> press pause. Press pause. What did you just say? <laughs> yeah, like I saw him. And I knew we were going to get married. He hadn't spoken to me. He hadn't said anything to me. He just came up the, the, from the stairs of the bus and stood. And I knew we were going to get married. Then our eyes locked. Mm -hmm. He said, Hey! <laughs> the most beautiful woman in this bus. <laughs> then he pointed at me. Then he said, Madam. Are you aware that I'm going to marry you? I said, this is finished. I said, God, how could you do this to your friend? How do you give me a... He doesn't speak in English. See the way he looks. Okay, he's cute. But no, like, <laughs> really? <laughs> Was I had my 10-point program for the kind of guy I'd like to get married to? English already had gone off. <laughs> Educated, what already had gone off. As, as it's like... All he was left with was possibly a relationship with God. Mm. Anyway, he asked the person who was seated next to me to excuse him because that person was seated next to his wife. He sat with me. We talked. No English word from Brian. I spoke in English. Brian replied in Luganda. Are you serious? <laughs> Brian replied in Luganda. We went all the way to Nairobi. We started ministry. And then the guy who had been acting the Jesus part mm -hmm. had to come back to Kampala. Okay. So they needed someone to act. So in a meeting, they asked Brian to act. And Brian says, but me, I'm not saved. I said, now you see. Even the last <laughs> point which I thought he was. <laughs> he's not saved. Ah, God, you're the worst. Anyway, long story short, one of the shows that we've done... Uh, Brian actually invites people to come and give their lives to Christ. And when the pastor comes to say a prayer, Brian goes down the stairs and then also says the sinner's prayer. Yeah. So he gets saved. The one who has been calling people to get saved now, all of a sudden, he turns around <laughs> to also now give his life people to like, Christ. People like, what's going and on here? Tell this Jesus. <laughs> um, so, and then that's when I saw God just start to tick off <laughs> All of Brian's. So by the time we left Nairobi, I realized he could speak English. So I'm like, okay, oh, two out of ten. Okay. Mm -hmm. But Lord, why two out of ten? So by the time I left Nairobi, like I knew, and he also knew that we we're going to how that was going to work. We also didn't click. Uh, needless to exaggerate, it's only seven years later that we started to date. Oh, okay. Um, I was dating someone at that time when he had walked up the stairs from a bus mm, but you were fighting you're like, mm, mm, no, like no 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 nobody no. but i remember even with my girlfriends um we used to call him future consumption Am I in a rush? <laughs> like every time he asked me, to, you know, said, you know, let's date. I'm like, why? I know I'm going to get married to you. So if I date you now, that's it for me. No, but this. So I date. <laughs> I dated. Went out, had dinner. Like I really just, cause I knew. 
this is my end game like so i'm in no rush so finally yeah one time i said okay but okay god okay 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 i'll enter a relationship with him if he finds me here in ginger mm -hmm. so he happened to call where are you i said oh i'm in ginger it's like hey okay kale have a good time yeah 9 p.m knock on the door brian mulondo was there i was like okay god <laughs> you win by the time he had by this time he had improved from two out of ten to like a paltry five out of ten <laughs> i'm sorry brian i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> a paltry five out of ten mm. he was now working with watoto mm. so i was like oh actually he actually has bambi a nice job yeah um okay he's earning money because i remember i still fear poverty at this mm. point so mm. you can't tell me this man so he was collecting. bettering himself he was getting was, he was actually already better it's just that i didn't have access to that information okay, okay what i had okay. access to was this gentleman who was carrying Putting charcoal cha yes mm. so for me he was a charcoal seller from somewhere i didn't speak <laughs> english that that's the one who god wanted for me i said god you are joking <laughs> so anyway by this time he's yeah he's, his numbers are looking really good um i got out of the relationship that was in at that time wasn't ready to enter another relationship although god had already confirmed that yeah like now for real so i entered a relationship with him two years after that last relationship yes. and yeah it's now been seven years married yeah. eight years actually so you dated um, for how long we dated for two years mm. we dated for two years then got so basically you've known him like for a very 17 long time. years yes, yeah mm -hmm. before he became a celeb what were no more people <laughs> he lived in a garage uh, <laughs> Um, after he left school, lived in a garage. Actually, his company is now called Garage Group. Mm -hmm. Because of the garage, that's where everything started for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's bought our first land there. Bought our first car. Um, yeah, that's. You were saying yeah, that he's a person who's always pushing you and always reminding you yes. what you what you're What's, able to accomplish. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. He's he's such a perfect balance for me to be able to tell me this is how far you've come. This is how much more you can go. Um, I remember I told you earlier, I, I really want to work on my personal brand this 2020. It's, um, it's come as one of the things that are priority for me this next year. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was going through um, a strategy session, going through the competition. What? Then he asked me, so who's your competition? So I start naming some interesting names. And says, no, no. No. It's like, where is Chimamanda's name? I died. <laughs> I said, hey, excuse me, sir. Do you know Chimamanda? <laughs> Do you know her? Do you know me? <laughs> oh, wow. And that's, the, that, that's who he sees. Mm. Um, and I respect that. I see it there in the distance. Mm. Um, but I also, I also respect where he sees his wife. Yeah. And he's constantly been there to get me to where i'm at right now mm -hmm. um for example we've never had a maid in our home but brian will oh my no i told you already i fear hell i, know. I fear poverty I, I, and hell i thought so, i thought you meant like a nanny no no nothing like nothing anyway not even a maid so this this and I guess also for him it was a comfort because yeah, I want to be able to walk in my home in boxers and feel nothing. <laughs> so it's he's been the wind beneath my my wings. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like that ego that's that's flying above you, ahead of you, then looks back, says, What are you doing? Circles back, picks you up, takes me, then encourages me, then to soar, then he goes on his own, then he's Mada comes, circles back, <laughs> you know. Um, yes. Even to points where if I have to go soar higher, he still takes me that far, he says, Go, 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 go. And I, I realize now why God chose him for me mm. because I don't think many men do that. Mm. Many men have the capacity to. Mm. Once he said to me, if I ever hear you didn't take an opportunity because you're married to me, I'll bring our divorce papers. You're married to me, you have children, I'll bring our divorce papers. 
He said, because I don't want to ever go before God. And God said, and, and I am the reason you didn't reach your, your, you didn't fulfill your potential. Mm -hmm. No, that one will be on you, mm. but not on not me. me. Mm -hmm. So he's lived that. Like at first I thought, ah, he's just jazzing. I told him, me, I can be a rich woman's wife. I can be a rich man's wife. He mm. said, mm. <laughs> even Understanding if, where you've come if, from. Hey, I, I, don't I, know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. He told me, Manuela, even if I woke up today morning and I was so dear, I would chase you out of that house to go and work. Because you do, you do you not exist it. to just be my wife. Mm. Yo. So how don't you wake up? <laughs> how don't you wake up? Especially if you're Sophia Povert. <laughs> you wake up. <laughs> I love it. You wake up. You, hey, you know, like, yeah. So that's Brian for me. So he's been such an encourager. Um, I mean, last, last, the whole of last, last th this year, actually, last year into this year, I was, I was battling depression. Mm. And he's the one that showered me, took care of me when he would come in and find me in my pajamas. Go like, have you, sh like, mm. takes me, showers, because next day, Manuela, you still have it? Takes me, showers me, brings me back, Manuela, you know, so mm. he's, he's the true definition of a support um anyway if eh? mm -hmm. that leave him alone he was <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I have to put a disclaimer leave him alone because now at now you might confuse him please please <laughs> but yeah that's yeah that's brian it's beautiful yeah that's very beautiful wow what a journey yes ah, manuela <laughs> someone just seeing you when she's all yeah. In the high heels. Uh, Never to imagine, but that's so yeah. powerful. Thank You've you. come through a lot, and I can only imagine how it strengthened you and your relationship with your mom. My mom, yes. Mm -hmm. It's she's even right now. She's at the center. Mm -hmm. She runs the childcare center while I'm away, which is most of the time. Wow. She's um, so she, she's actually the reason for the cradle. I wouldn't say it's me. What? No. I just say, Mommy, now this is what we need to do. And she beautifully implements. She's, she's, <sighs> now that relationship also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's, she's been a wonderful support. Mm -hmm. I, I look back at her past and I realize that in her way, she, in, 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 by virtue of the fact that I became her sister, her, daughter i was her daughter kind of became a partner a friend we shared so many memories we cried so much together mm. but one thing i really respect about my mom is not once did she ever talk about my dad mm -hmm. from her nothing she left all us the children to experience him on our own not once that's the best ever. gift you can ever give your children yeah. mm. she, so she, she's very she's comfortable in where we are at she knows whatever i'm going through with my dad is based on my own judgment yes. with him my brothers my based not influenced by her not influenced by her mm. and i completely respect that but not once she ever say anything against my dad mm -hmm. she well we have to wrap up We're almost out of time now we know that there's a book <laughs> yeah, we put out there. But also, I was reading about your plans. You want to have a franchise. Yes. <laughs> and then, you, you know, you went for Inspire Africa. You want some money there. You did a competition with DFCU Bank as mm -hmm. well recently. Yes. And then you're talking about Brian telling you if he ever hears an opportunity came up and you said no. No, yeah. So is that like your driving force? Something <laughs> comes your way and you're like, I'll always I can do it. this. Yeah. I always feel that the way opportunity works is it comes to you. Mm. You either take it or you don't. If an opportunity comes to you, mm -hmm. I take it. Okay. 100%. I give 100% of myself. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't meant to be mine and somehow it doesn't work out. What says around my area code and I thought it was mine, <laughs> then I realized that it wasn't, mm -hmm. it will fail. Okay. Like, and that I, but I know I gave it a hundred percent. So because of that, I never, I don't live in a life of regrets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, possibly my only regret was this last immunization uh, cancer scare. But apart from that, everything else, my regrets 
quite few, mm. close to nothing, because I know I have given it 100%, it just didn't work. What cancer so, scare is this? Um, 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 cervical cancer. Uh, my mom was unwell. We fundraised, took her to India to, to test her for whatever could be the matter. She, hmm, while she's going to do her test, she goes like, why don't you take some tests with me so that I can have someone to be with? I'm like, oh, okay. I pay for like the cheapest <laughs> test. But even when you pay for that cheapest test, it's a basic test. That Let's test you. They do a pap smear. They do some other tests. Running, my heart rate, my kidneys, just basic tests. Mm -hmm. Um, two days later, we come in, st my mom's still doing tests, the doctor calls me in. All the doctors are stressed. They were all coming in from her room, they all leave. I tell her, what's wrong with mom? Mm. She goes like, actually, it's not mom, it's you. I'm like, me? Like, how? Why? She says, I have to do more tests uh, for you. Now, I didn't hear the rest of what she said. I just started to pray immediately. Mm -hmm. so it's like, God, whatever it is, I come against, I refuse, I refute, I am, eh! I said everything that I could say. And then, after she was done speaking, I knew she had now let me go. A, a nurse came in, picked me up, took me to my room, um, to the waiting room where my mom was. That's where I found out what was going on, because my mom was praying. Okay. And she said, I come against cancer, I refuse this cancer in her body. Lord, it will not. I, that's when it don't ask, like, Okay, I didn't wait to hear for what the doctor said, but now my mom is saying it. Now getting the phone, rushing to the toilet. I called Brian, I said, Brian, there's something going wrong. He goes like, what? So I tell him, Brian shouted to the other end. He said, no, Manuela, no, you can't leave us, no. We cried, 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 cried. Uh, so I went to do other tests, more tests. And well, I thought, they thought that I had precancerous cells. And so from that day, I've been having um, pap smears done every three months. Okay. Sending the results to India, but I still have to go back. So that if they're still there, they have to scrape them mm -hmm. off my cervix. Okay. And if they still grow, burn them, everything to make sure that I don't get sick. But isn't it amazing you caught it early? Early. Like that's, that's what, you know, ultimately when we're praying, God said, he said, you know, the reason as to why you found this out is so that you can know early yeah. and do something about it early. Because I'm not yet done with you. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, you're not yet done with me. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, 2020, where we want to get um, 15 centers into the country. Yeah. I, I, I'm even talking about the number and I'm like, Manuela, are you listening to 15 centers? <laughs> like... 15, from who does, like, Manuela, really, please. Anyway, 15 centers, Gulu, Barara, Bale, mm -hmm. Port Porto, the major districts, yeah. Tororo, Jinja, Mukono. That's a major investment, so you, I'm sure you're looking for partners. Yes, looking for partners. Them. And the way childcare works, we can't use employees mm. because then I can't, we can't be at a place of trying to, supervise employees in Gulu. So we actually need business owners who want to start child care centers mm -hmm. that can take on the cradle name. Mm -hmm. And then if a, if a business owner exists, they will do everything possible to make sure that business has. Because yeah. the product we are working with is life. <laughs> yes. So we don't have the luxury. It's not like it's food. It's not like, so it's, we don't have the luxury to just have employees and, mm. and hire and no. We need business owners, and so that's why we decided to actually franchise uh, okay. the model. Okay. Yeah. So oh, that's nice. that's where it all came from. So eh, 2020 plans. to 2024. Mm, that's after elections. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's that pick up. <laughs> all will be well. All will be well. Yes. yes. Yeah. But th at that point, not many people are investing. Yeah. The, it's, people it's, people are on down. the flow. Mm. And so we have to respect the process. Yeah. That those things actually happen. So now is the time that we'll be doing a lot of training, uh, getting people in on the brand, what it means, how we do what we do. So that then by 2022, mm -hmm. people are we're now just setting up. Yeah. We've already done yeah, all the background work. Yeah. So 
fingers crossed we need to meet more moms <laughs> um i remember my boss saying i don't know why you're leaving the bo boardroom you are made for the boardroom i remember telling him i have to leave so more women can get into this boardroom mm -hmm. so for me more centers means more women in the boardroom more women who are comfortable more pursuing their yes careers. exactly pursuing their careers because there's absolutely nothing wrong with being able to do that yeah. and also it helps to have a child care center like the cradle that can do the, the curriculum the way we're doing it mm -hmm. and stimulate children having the knowledge of childbirth stimulation yeah. when you're done thinking about it you're like okay my child would rather be there than be with me who's who's going to be on my phone answering emails <laughs> Yeah. and pretending that I'm trying to be a mom. I mean, if we could all homeschool and give them that, yeah. that would be it ideal. Would be a, yeah, but we can't. Mm. And even then, even if we did, we don't know how to do yeah, it. Yeah, you're not trained we to are do not that. You're not trained to do that. <laughs> so I keep saying that um, ultimately what I want to do is for moms, as long as if they're pursuing their careers, they're also having quality relationships with their children. Yeah. So we actually do a lot of partnerships with parents. What do you do when you see your child? Mm. What toys should you buy based on what's going on at the cradle? Yeah. What books should you buy? Where should you buy from? What can help you? So they are, you find that a parent is more intentional mm. about their parenting because, they, because of the partner they have in child care. And what they're so. picking up. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much <laughs> Thank you too. Thank for you coming too. on the show and for sharing. Have Yo, a powerful story. I can't wait to hear your story one day. Like, <laughs> there's there. There, there. Yes. <laughs> I want to hear it. There, it's there. <laughs> now I need to do to you what you do to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, but blessings. Thank you so dear. much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. And I wish you all the best. We'll be watching. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for this show. So it's it's yeah, it's open our eyes to the journeys that we all walk. Thank you.